everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are rejoining the crew of the uh, Artemis 4M here in Mars orbit. Uh, they've done many uh, aerobraking passes and a, a little bit of a propulsive pass. So I've uh, shifted some fuel around from our HAB module back into the primary tank, giving us about uh, 2159 meters per second. Uh, we have our closest approach with Harmonia Station established. We're going to come within about 28 meters. Uh, in one hour, 16 minutes. That burn is going to take 539.9 meters per second to correct. Uh, and of course, it's uh, not giving me the engine readouts because I just loaded in. We have 31 ignitions remaining. No small feat there. But uh, I'm going to put that burn time somewhere around five and a half, six minutes or so. So we're going to warp on around to this node and uh, try to make our docking approach to Harmonia Station. We'll just uh, speed up this warp a little bit, which, of course, I will inevitably screw up. Man, the delicate balance of trying to get these burns correct is always absolutely horrible. All right. Uh, RCS to arm. We go 5 minutes 20 seconds from our closest approach. This pivot maneuver is going to increase that greatly. That's fine. That'll just make it a bit more comfortable, I hope. All right, and I I know having 31 ignitions seems excessive, but it always worries me that we're going to run out of ignition somehow, or if we need it to do other things, etc. There she is, Harmonia Station. So uh, we're just going to speed up the warp a little bit, get this down to about the four-minute mark. Yeah, maybe a little less, because as we burn to make rendezvous, it is actually going to increase our time until closest approach. So I'll in our service propulsion engine. Ignition. Solid light. Okay, and we just, uh, at some point, that counter is going to start counting up. Well, it's moving down at less than a second per second. So we are, in fact, making a difference. Uh, 5 minutes 53. Oh, I miscalculated. Okay, well, maybe we'll college a little bit. Now, I don't want to waste the fuel on thruster power. If we overshoot, we overshoot. I'm just going to let that separation at closest approach climb a little bit. We'll use our radial corrective measures here to uh, make sure that we can stay within our allotted distance to station. And nobody here is an experienced enough pilot to stay on the node. Well, that's got to change. Unfortunately, it probably won't change until we bring them back home from Mars, which is the great conundrum of needing experience to do cool stuff, but having to do cool stuff to gain experience. Uh, story of life, I suppose. So anyway, I have uh, done the fantastic favor of speeding all of this up in post because, oh, well, I guess you'll you'll see it all for yourself eventually here. But uh, this was a, uh, a nice balance of uh, using thrusters to try to keep that separation at closest approach to a nice low number while uh, burning on the engine, but also keeping a time on that time until closest approach. Um, as that number starts to grow, as we start to slow down, it does throw off our uh, pre-programmed maneuver node, uh, which will actually necessitate us uh, doing this in a couple of different steps. But uh, I like to think that I'm getting better. So there we've deactivated the engine. We've got about a minute and 36 seconds to kill. We're going to do it thanks to some time warp. But our separation and closest approach started to get a little bit out of hand. We're only about 22 meters per second or so off from our target velocity. You can see Harmonia Station there at the just past us on the right hand side of the screen. It's not there anymore, but there is a touch up burn on our service propulsion engine to uh, zero out the rest of that relative velocity. And now we will just be on thruster approach for the rest of this docking. And there's that uh, super fun, the space station moves when you put it in time warp. But uh, I did not have the time to sit around and just uh, twiddle my thumbs for a minute. So when we come out of time warp, it's in a completely different place, but a whole lot closer. Only uh, about a meter and a half per second to kill will zero out some of this relative velocity while we make our approach to this side docking port that we have designated as our target. That uh, brings us uh, right up to the lab, so we can actually just uh, go right in if these were crew tubes. Of course they're not, but uh, we'll, we'll pretend anyway. So we'll just uh, pull ourselves up, trying to operate on one axis at a time, but it's... Uh, not a very easy feat. 
and I know it doesn't look like it from this angle. The station is actually rotating a little bit, and the balance of the Artemis is off. I should have transferred fuel a whole lot sooner, but uh, I did not. And it uh, does result in some of this uh, wonky angling at times. But uh, putting fuel into the HAB module to uh, achieve a better balance uh, goes pretty quickly. These thrusters are hungry. We do chew through a whole lot of fuel. And now you can see the station does have some uh, motion to it. Uh, when we last left it, I did not turn on its SAS or its thrusters, which of course doesn't really become a problem until you try to touch it with something. And then, uh, yeah, it starts moving away from you. Uh, when it gets the blast of these thrusters. So we are off angle. There's a little bit of a nudge and another one from the uh, wide plate of the HAB module, and now it's spinning away from us and moving to the side, which makes things extra, extra fun. Yeah, docking with moving targets is um, terrible. I do not recommend anyone does it because, yeah, you can get lined up, start your approach, but by the time you get there, the angle is completely different. And which, of course, then you just nudge it, and it increases the spin. Yeah. <laughs> it was a struggle, and it took uh, way longer than it had any right to take. Um, this is a very clear warning to leave SAS and thruster power active on the things you're trying to dock with, because otherwise they go twirling around, and it's absolutely no fun trying to line up a rendezvous with them. Yeah, this is obviously off angle. But now I'm going to try to rebalance the Artemis a little bit in hopes that that uh, helps us in some small measure. It does not. We are still trying to dock with a moving object that doesn't really want us to be able to pin it down. And uh, yeah, I'm sure Bowman here was getting a, uh, a little fed up with this nonsense. So after a couple more scrapes of paint and uh, pushing it away with those super awesome thrusters, we did in fact decide to uh, take a different approach and bring control back to this station if uh, by the only real method we have. Yeah, well, I'll turn you over to old me to talk about it some more. Alright, this whole station is spinning nonsense is getting a little ridiculous, so uh, I know it is not Catherine Richards specialty going on free floating EVA. Um, she may have some things to deal with there still, but we need to send someone over to rein the station in. That slow rotation is just absolutely killing us. Uh, and while you're here, take an EVA report and get over into that lab and start booting this station up. Because my goodness, this is just horrible. <laughs> Yeah. No fear. You'll not run out of fuel here. Board. Uh, grab. Good job. All right. Board. Fantastic. RCS to arm. RCS to arm. Seriously? No pilot controls from here, huh? Let's get rid of that. Oh, it... No connect. It shouldn't matter that we don't have a connection. None of our commands are working. I guess we need to have a command pod dock. Just this uh, lab isn't going to be enough. Yeah, look, it's already it's rotated out about ninety degrees. Okay, well we'll just uh, do this the dumb way. Bounce the time warp, switch vessels. We'll just uh, assume that Richards was able to uh, secure the station and its rotation and get things cleaned up a bit. So we're going to uh, try to maneuver this thing into position. This is. Why are these thrusters firing in very odd patterns? All right, well, let's uh, do this. Control from here. And see if that doesn't help us out a little bit. Actually, you know what? No, I want to orient the controls from the pod. Yeah, that does rotate us quite a bit now, doesn't it? Maybe that was part of the problem. All right. 
it looks like we need more weight up top still. Oh, man. Out. Out. Try to balance this thing. And we'll just top off the whole tank. Why not? There we go. All right. Now then, back to this whole docking fiasco. Which also means back to the Betty Uppy bits. So we're going to uh, try once again to uh, get our alignment with that docking port, preferably on one axis at a time. Uh, we're still not particularly as well balanced as I would have liked. Um, yeah, say so docking, or ooh, not docking port alignment indicator. Never again is the devil. Uh, RCS build aid. Um, is a really fantastic tool and is great until you start to account for the fact that your mass and your center of mass will be shifting as fuel is burned. And so if you plot to balance a craft out that's full of fuel and you come in with, uh, you know, a half or a quarter tank, uh, things get uh, a little weird pretty quickly. But uh, it is something that I'm going to have to take into consideration for future designs and uh, future attempts at docking things. Or really, I could just leave the SAS and the RCS on for things that I intend to dock to later and uh, avoid about 95% of this hassle. You can see now the space station is not moving. Or at least uh, moving away from us. Our approach is a whole lot cleaner because uh, it's just one solid line. There's a little bit of a nudge. Not that big of a deal. And uh, another nudge. <laughs> Still not too terrible. We're a lot closer to the docking port now, and I've decided, well, you know, we're just going to brute force it. If we have to rotate this whole station around to get these docking ports to line up, then so be it. We'll make our own artificial gravity. Anyway, here is old me to finish up this docking finally. Holy crap, finally. Hua! <laughs> I think we did manage to induce a slow roll in the station, as you can see now. Yep, there it is. All right, and now we've got a little cleaning up to do. So first thing we'll do is uh, get rid of this guppy. Um, that's a whole lot of food. Wow, that's a lot of food. Yeah, we need some place to put the water. Lock you open. Ah, of course. Of course it didn't take. Why would it take? Huh. Figures, doesn't it? And all these are locked. Okay, well, I guess it's just got too much water. No big deal. So, <laughs> we're going to time warp a second. Let that roll cease and desist. And uh, we're going to get rid of these two modules. And we'll do that by giving them a little bit of fuel. That should be good there. And I really hope that'll be enough there. But uh, while they are docked, we can shut this engine down. Just to make sure it's not going to cause us any problems and make sure these engines are fired up. Okay, that one's good. I guess I really only need two of yours. Activate. Activate. Perfect. View data. Oh yeah, we'll move that into the lab. That's the other thing we should start doing because we're probably going to have to time warp. That was 250 data. Good grief. We gotta go around and do all of these. Review report. 
Let me uh, lock this open just to make sure I don't overload for Dr. Richards. Locked, 250. Put it in the lab, 281. All right, she's going to make about 23 science a day all on her own. That is awesome. All right, we have local control. Okay, good. Comms, we will get comms. That's not my concern. So we're going to go ahead and uh, undock. Thunk. All right, it's going to take a little while for the signal delay on that to work. But we do have contact. That's even better, so real quick, undock, RCS stability control, good, those have been enabled, we got the countdown, make sure they're going through over here too, because this will happen first, nope, really, insufficient avionics, well that's new, Activate avionics then. Tell me that command went through. No. Really? All right, well then, I guess we'll do this one first. Perfect. All right. 70 or so meters per second. We don't need to do much to get this thing to deorbit, but we should probably do it out here at Apoapsis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Less than 50 meters per second will deorbit this thing. Perfect. Nodes in 43 minutes. F5, just to make sure. And uh, we'll just give them a little encouragement. Uh, pulling away from the station. And while we're still here, that's the station, that's you. So this command for your activation of avionics did nothing, I guess. All right, well, we'll wait six minutes for that. Controls unlocked. Let's open your tanks. What do you got? 90 meters per second, perfect. Uh, RCS to arm. Stability control to arm. Six more minutes. And this will lighten our part count by quite a bit. Perfect. So we're going to switch around again. Here we go. 29 more minutes to kill. All right. Let's pilot you in the direction of this. And engine is ullaged, go full bore. Perfect. All right, can we? Yes, we're still in range. If we can jump to the station, we can surely jump to this little guy. Oh, that's prograde. Oh, God, is retrograde going to be through the station? Man, I hope not. All right, we're going to get him clear. So maneuverable. And that's all she wrote. These two will dispose of themselves. Nope, not you. Yes, you. And now we have a much cleaner space station, thankfully. All right, I've kept you here long enough. That's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.